We used to think that seed needs liquid water to germinate. Um, but the seed has to absorb 45% of its weight in water to start the germination process and to get it up out of the ground. Uh, what we've found over, over years is that a large proportion of the water it absorbs it is actually in the water vapor form, not liquid water. Only 15% of its water requirements come from liquid water. Uh, so you start thinking, okay, you're creating the ideal seedbed condition. Uh, we know that there's a huge amount of capillary action in the soil of water moving up and into the water vapor form. So in most <coughs> cases, especially up here, this year is going to be a real good year because of your snow cover. We're actually going to have a very good soil seedbed moisture situation for children. Uh, and there's what I just said, water. Uh, I wanted to show this one, it just said total water soil content. And you can see what happens on days to emerge to 50% because really the first 50% of the seed that makes plants coming up out of the ground accounts for the bulk of your yield. And you can see that uh, we get up into this range right here, 15 to 18%. Look at your days to emerge. 13, 12, 9. Better moisture means quicker emergence. Uh, when we look at field capacity of the soil, of dry soil, which you had last spring, you did have a very dry seabed situation. And you can see what's happened over seven days. Uh, it's not giving you very much of the seed making plants. 40% uh, is sort of the cutoff line. We want to be above that, and I, I think we'll have that this spring coming up. I'm going to throw this one in. This is uh, just water logging, which you don't have too often, but occasionally uh, it can be a devastating thing, which it was this past spring in uh, the eastern part of Saskatchewan, Manitoba. And even three days of water logging, where those rosettes are sitting in water, there's no oxygen in the root system. The plant can't absorb anything. It can't take up water, it can't take up nutrients. It stalls out. And we've seen that in the piece in the past. Uh, seven days of water logging, look at that. We're looking at a reduction in yield of uh, uh, little, about 58%. So about 42% loss in yield, just with seven days of water logging. And it's not quite as critical at the seed filling stage. So the rosette is probably the major one. And why is it doing it? Because it reduced leaf area index. It reduced the photosynthetic capability of the plant by a huge amount. We need a very firm seed bed. And the, the nice thing with zero till is we achieved that, or even reduced tillage. Uh, there's a lot of factors involved in there. But I like to see direct seeding. I, find, on average, some of the best stands on direct seeding. You've got a firm seed bed to start with. You haven't reduced the moisture level by tillage. And it does make a difference. Uh, pH, literally across Western Canada, is not a huge, huge difference. Our black soils tend to have fewer limitations on average. Uh, that pH issue up here can reduce the amount of germination and emergence. And we find that quite often in our research programs at Beaver Lodge and Port Du Moines. Uh, texture has a big factor. If you've got a sandy loam over here, look at the difference in percent emergence. It's, it's pretty major. It's just moisture holding capacity. That's all it is. Uh, the variety you grow makes the difference. We know that the hybrids have a greater germination capability early. They tend to be larger on seed size, and they get out of the ground a little bit quicker. A higher percent of the seed makes plants. Um, this is just showing the difference between dry matter content, which think of it as leaf area index. And you can see that green line has a much higher ability to produce larger leaves earlier, and that results in higher yields. Seed quality, 
absolutely important. How many of you actually look at vigor? Yeah, you do. Excellent. But the value you get is kind of meaningless. I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunately, our vigor tests are not all that great. We want to have large pump seats. Uh, we had a, quite a discussion here over the last oh, three, four weeks on wheat in particular. Out uh, of some areas, the uh, thousand kernel weight's very low, like way lower than what it would normally be because of all the uh, too much water in there in, in that case. And you've got to look at, okay, uh, how much do you put on? What's your, what's your seed mortality, seed and seedling mortality going to be? It's going to be huge. And we're looking at probably an increase in 30 to 40 percent on the seeding rate on the wheat alone. Uh, I like to see large, large seed, and I'll show you why in a, in a short while. It's, it's thousand kernel weight, is, and it took me about five years to convince the uh, seed companies to start putting thousand kernel weight on their bags. They just, they, they really were hesitant. They just kept hammering them. <laughs> hey, you've got to do it. Uh, if you don't have thousand kernel weight, uh, it, it's, it's a start of understanding how that seed's going to make plants. It really, truly is. Um, you look at this from the Canola Council, there's your thousand kernel weight. How much variability do we have in seed lots and varieties? It, this year I was looking at material that was at 2.5 grams per thousand seed. I was looking at other varieties that were at the 6 grams per thousand. Huge, large seed. Some of the hybrids are in that. Uh, four and a half to five and a half range on average, if, if they did it right. And unfortunately, we haven't got the message across to all our seed growers that they just have to really watch when they swap on, on certified seed. They have to. Because they have a very high value product, they tend to go in early at 20% seed color change, and they haven't filled out that seed to its maximum capability. A lot of them have changed that. But look at your seeding rate. If you get up, just average, you know, you get up to uh, six pounds an acre and you go down here, you're below what you want to see from a stand establishment standpoint. Seed mortality is probably the most difficult one. Uh, we tend to do that with all our clients we work it out on a thousand kernel weight <coughs> on what their plant population should be. We want to know what that seed mortality is. And it's tough because it'll vary from year to year depending on the environment. But once you have a whole bunch of years that tell you 50% of the seed you put in the ground doesn't make plants, that's average. We've got growers now that are actually achieving 70% uh, success seed making plants and, and that's really the critical. These are all factors that are going to uh, <laughs> contribute. Uh, even the rocks, yeah, it'll stop. The seed comes up, hits a rock, bang, it's finished. But most of it is disease. Most of our seed that doesn't make plants are disease. And it's usually Rhizotonia, Pythium, or Fusarium. All three organisms exist up here quite nicely in canola. And especially if you're growing canola, canola, or snow, canola, snow, canola. Because this is a very, Rhizoctonia is, lives in the soil as a spore. And as a spore, it's highly protected. It's got a long uh, period of time it can live in the soil. And it doesn't germinate unless it is very close to the root. So you get a susceptible plant like stinkweed, they'll trigger it. Canola will trigger it. All the crucifers will actually trigger Rhizoctonia germination, and then it will invade the plant. And I, I found situation eight, actually one that was really neat. I, I felt sorry for the grower. Uh, he said, well, my field's disappearing. There's flea beetles in there. So he sprayed it. 
It wasn't flea beetles at all. It was seedling blight. Okay, took it up. And our range is 20 to 80 percent mortality. And the 80 percent up here is frequent on the fields that I've watched. You know what the seeding rate was, we know what the thousand kernel weight was, and you go and count plants, and 80% of the seed didn't make successful plants. 80%, just wow. And a lot of it had to do with how it was handled, where it was placed, how much fertilizer went on with the seed, and stressing it. Uh, we normally just use 50% as a normal figure for Western Canada. Up here, we've got to be more cautious, especially on our lower pH soils. We tend to see a lot lower uh, uh, plants. So how do you choose what's the right population? Uh, you're going to go through this. I use a seeding rate formula. Targeted plant population per square foot thousand kernel weight divided by our seedling survival rate, which is always hard to estimate, divided by 10. Well, here we want eight plants per square foot. Uh, four grams per thousand, which is a very good uh, seed size, and that means 6.4 pounds of seed per acre on average. Not using a 50% survival level. And the reason why is canola is the most flexible plant you're ever going to grow. It is the most flexible plant. Here's 60 plants per square meter up to 180 or 18 per square foot. And you look at down here, the average yield is the same. Because those plants can compensate. But there are other issues that come into play here that you have to take into consideration. Uh, when you've got 60 plants per square meter or six per square foot, you've got a plant that will branch more. It produces a lot more branches, so it means it's longer maturing, which you can't really can't handle in the Peace River block because of your limitations on crop. When you get up into this range, you've got thinner stems. The stems are much thinner, you've got less secondary branching, so it's much more uniform in plant density and maturity, but it will go over on you if you start getting into that higher range. When we look at all the research work that's done, it really doesn't show much difference. Uh, 65 station years of data for Argentine. There was no effect on 35% of those trials. And then we just basically have, well, okay, if you went at six, it was the highest. 17% of the time it was there. And at six to eight pounds, and even at more than eight pounds, 22%. So it's very flexible. You don't worry about your seating rate until you get into uh, very low numbers. This is some of the Canola Council's research work that was done. Guys like Nick Underwood, and they carried out a huge number of trials across Western Canada using this one uh, Bayer variety. And you can see where the cutoff line is. About four plants per square foot is the bottom end. That's the critical level. You start getting into much lower than that, and you start seeing uh, potential for loss of yield. Uh, this is taking a different look at it with all the data, and you can see at the 90% critical level, it's about 30 plants per square meter, or 3 per square foot, roughly. And that's the critical area. You can see a whole drop in yield. Yeah, there's some over here, even 6 plants per square foot. And then it's a flat line until we get to about 25, 30 plants per square foot, which this one didn't go to, uh, you start seeing a drop off in yield at the real high level. I walked fields last year that were 30 plants per square foot. I couldn't believe it. It was bin run seed, <laughs> got lots of seed, put her in the ground and 30 plants per square foot. What happened? That field logs like you wouldn't believe. A good strong straw variety and it still went flat and the sclerotinia levels were atrocious. 